what's going on good people welcome back to another episode of trading my funded account today is day number nine it's october the 23rd 2023 we made some trades today so let's get into it first and foremost let's talk about the important levels that we have on the chart today we have yesterday's closing price up here at this purple line at 254 and that played a pretty important role in today's session so let's go ahead and get right into it and talk about trade number one now when the market first opened we had a spike to the upside but we continued to move lower a little bit we had a higher low that got established right here we broke back down below it and then once you break back past a level of support from a higher low it then becomes resistance so then you so then you can expect prices to come back up retest that level and when they do you should see some type of rejection now that right there is my setup but the reason i didn't take it is because within the first 10 minutes i try my best to not trade unless i see something that's just perfectly obvious now right here it looks perfect after the fact but in the moment i just wasn't quite sure if this level of resistance would hold up so i skipped that trade and then we see prices come back to make a low where they formed a little bit of a little small consolidation zone from this low at 33,054 back up to this level at the higher low from 33,091 and we pretty much just bounced in between those levels now once we broke down once we broke down below it i drew a level of resistance across the lows from the bodies right here for this overall zone that we just talked about and connected that with the wicks for that same overall area that we're looking at and then extended that across and looked to go short as prices came back up to retest those levels and then continue back down so as soon as i saw the retest that's when i went short on trade number one shorted here during a downtrend as prices came back to retest a previous resistance level and that right there is my textbook setup when i'm trying to trade a downtrend now the only thing i would say about this trade is that in the future sometimes i might want to be a little bit more cautious because i don't know exactly what it was but it was something that told me hmm, this trade is a little bit risky top but i still chose to take it anyway because i saw that the trend was down and i'm like well this is the only trade that makes sense at this point It's part of my trading plan so i feel obligated to take it but if you look at where i got out at the low for this uh hold on okay there we go so the low for this candle right here was thirty three thousand and twenty three. but my trade i got in at thirty three thousand and forty four and got out exactly at thirty three thousand and twenty three so it's something in my mind that makes me wonder is that just a perfect trade where i get in at the right price and get out at the exact right price or is that a risky trade where in other scenarios it might not work out as well i feel like today that was a trade that i had to take but going forward maybe i could be a little bit more cautious about trades like that because at the end of the day you never know so you got to trust your instinct and that's the biggest thing i learned right there on trade number one so we continue moving up we break up past that higher low that we were just talking about created a, another higher low on top of that so let's go ahead and actually mark that up real quick now sometimes the higher lows won't come back to get retested so in this scenario that we're looking at right here notice how prices never came back down to retest this higher low so instead what they'll do is they'll break above the swing high that that higher low originally just came out of which was this prior swing high right so they'll break above it and then they'll come back and retest it now i didn't take this trade in this account for my funded account but for the evaluation account that i'm trying to do i did take that trade and i went long right here as prices came back to retest this high right here so that was in my uh, evaluation account i did well in that account today may 127 so not bad about one third of the way towards that 1500 profit target so making progress slow and steady the way i should so back to the funded account i didn't take that trade i skipped that trade on the funded account so we come back up we create a higher low right here not the strongest higher low but because the trend was so strong i was like well if that's what the market is going to give me that's what i'll take so i circled it up drew my level of support across but i didn't go long right here because i just wasn't quite sure i was like you know what i really don't want to go long based off of this higher low because it's just not the strongest higher low in my opinion so i want to wait for uh, a better opportunity before i decide to get in so we see prices come back create a, another higher low after they made a false double top so that's another thing i want to talk about a lot of times in the market when you're in a strong trend you might see the market put in some type of 
bearish candlestick chart pattern. In this, situation, in this scenario, we had a double top. And usually a double top should lead to more selling in the future, the immediate future, right? But in a scenario where the trend is really strong, I've seen a lot of times where you could have a double top that gets formed in the uptrend, but prices will run right back past it and pretty much have a stop run for all of the people that were trying to short it from right here. And that stop run will pretty much give a very good catalyst that will lead to another push higher because everybody that's short, they have to cover their positions. And in order to cover your short, you got to buy it back. So you're a buyer, not by not by choice, but by force. But nonetheless, you're still a buyer. So that's one of the biggest reasons why sometimes you don't put too much emphasis into a bearish type of reversal pattern if the uptrend is very strong. And that's what we ran into today. So after we broke past that false double top, we came back and created a, another higher low. So once I saw that higher low, I was like, okay, we got past that double top right there. We moved on from this weaker higher low down here and we made another more sound, more textbook and stronger higher low. So that's when I said, okay, cool. Now I'm operating. So I said, if prices come back to this level, I look to go long and follow my strategy as I should. So that's exactly what I did on trade number two. But if we read the notes, it says, yeah, I went long right here as prices retested the prior higher low, but I bought against selling momentum right here. And when you're trading a higher low, that's definitely one of the things you want to look out for. You know, if the prices are coming back to that level with too much momentum and the candles are red and the candles are very large on higher volume, that means that you want to take a second and kind of evaluate what prices do when they get to that level. Now, today, I didn't evaluate and see what the reaction would be. I had my order already sitting right there and I was ready to get in. But if I would have had a chance to kind of fill it out and see how the market wanted to move, I would have been able to identify that the selling momentum was a little bit stronger. So maybe that means that we'll come back down and retest this previous higher low. Because if you notice, this higher low actually never got retested. They tried to come back and test it on this one candle right here. They wicked away from it, but can never get back down to that level to make an actual test of that exact price point. But this time we did. We came back and we retested that. So I ended up getting stopped out on trade two because of that. Now, one of the things I learned when it comes to trading higher lows is that if you get into the higher low strategy uh, plan at the right levels, at the right price, and your entry aligns with the trend. So if it's an uptrend and you're going long and everything works out, but the trade still ends up as a loss. If prices ever, ever spike, spike back, back through that original entry, entry price, price that you took that, that, uh, that you took that trade, trade from, from, you get back in, no questions asked, and you ride that momentum up to the next major important level above. So that's pretty much the, the mentality that I had behind trade number three today. So if we read the notes, it says, I went long here as prices spiked past the entry price of trade number two. And then I held this up back to yesterday's closing price, YCP. Now, now on this specific, uh, specific, specific trade, trade, I could have got, got my scalp target of 20 to 25, 25 points, would have got out somewhere between 26 and 31. But because I saw the major level above and I saw that prices had a lot of momentum making their way up to that price point, I said, you know what? It just makes sense to hold it to yesterday's closing price. And I didn't hold it all the way up there. I got out a little bit early because I don't like to hold uh, trades all the way up to a very important level because. I just, I just seen so many scenarios where prices, prices reverse a couple of points away and you're holding out for those last couple and you give back all the gains you made. So I made sure I locked that in on trade three. And that was one of my best trades since I've had this funded account. I think this might be my best trade. Uh, this was 41 points. So not bad at all. After that, I decided to call it a day. I'm almost back up to the same equity levels that I had on Friday before I, not Friday, before I had, that I had on Thursday before I kind of lost discipline, discipline and blew up a little bit. bit. So, so I'm making my way back up to the positions that I should be at slowly but surely, just making the right trades and trying to do the right thing. And I think overall, I would say today I came in and did a lot of good things. Every trade that I took, all three of them, they all followed my trading plan. And I can go back to my notes and pick out specific examples where I've traded these exact same setups. And I think that's what I really got to stick to and that's pretty much what I talked about on Friday and what I've been working on this weekend, which is just coming into the market. And the first thing that I have to do is only look to trade higher lows. But even with that being the case, I still have to make sure that I trade the higher low the correct way. So if we go back to trade number two, that's a prime example of not just taking every higher low that you see, 
but only taking the premium higher lows where you feel like this setup has a very high probability of working based on the market scenario that you're looking at. So that's one of the things I got to keep working on. You know, every higher low is not built the same. Some are C plus setups, some are B plus setups, and some of them are A plus setups. So I need to work on being distinctive enough to only identify the A plus setups and then have enough discipline to only take those A plus higher low setup so i think that's the next level of progression that i need to work my way up to and that's what i'll be working on tonight in my back testing session but that's pretty much all i got for you guys today i hope you learned a lot about using that higher low strategy and also aiming for yesterday's closing price when you see momentum moving up towards that level and just one more thing just because you see ycp above doesn't mean that you just blindly enter a trade trying to take it to those levels you might see that level above, but you still got to make sure that you get your setup and you have a, a A plus setup that you can get into and then eventually ride prices back up to that level. On a day like today, we was able to get that. But there will be days where prices make that move up to YCP, but they don't give you your setup. And sometimes you just got to sit there and watch it. Don't be mad. Just salute all the other traders that probably caught that move. It just wasn't yours to catch that day. So I always remember that too when it comes to trading yesterday's closing price. But that's really all I got for you guys today. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow on October 24th, 2023, ready to run it back. But until then, you guys, have a good one and take it easy.